with this, they maybe kind of had to. Plus, otherwise we couldn't have had that badass fight at the end. The effects hold up relatively well. I mean, the blood and gore look great, and the costume remains fantastic. The cloaked predator still looks pretty good. Granted, the plasma bursts or whatever, and the animated sparks do look a bit dated, but that's about it. Come on, stop bullshitting me. I know you speak English. Everybody does if I just threaten them enough. It is perhaps a little unfortunate that the Spanish in this is very, very simple. I mean, the girl says, no sé, and no estoy seguro, which means I don't know and I'm not sure, respectively. However, the interpreter guy says, she says the jungle came alive and killed them, to which Carl Weathers responds, no, that's not what she said, and you might for a second think that, oh, okay, he's gonna actually translate what they just had her say. But then he says, what she says doesn't make any sense. As if the jungle came alive and took him makes any sense. When the movie airs here in Denmark on television, they sometimes attach a subtitle of sorts, calling it what translates into Predator, the hunt is on. That makes pretty decent sense. Anyway, that's it for the first movie. Moving on to Predator 2. Now, when that airs on television here, it sometimes receives a subtitle as well. The stupid thing is that the subtitle it gets is simply the Danish word for Predator. So, when it airs, it'll be announced as Predator 2, the Predator. I guess for the benefit of the Danes who don't know the meaning of the word Predator, Actually, that's the subtitle it'll be given when they announce it once the movie actually starts. It'll be called Predator 2 Hell in Los Angeles. Which, I suppose, makes a certain amount of sense. So, some producers sat down, looked at the first Predator, and decided, if it sells, we can milk it. The film is apparently partially written, once again, by Jim Thomas and his John Thomas. But come on, that is a pretty fucking unfortunate name. And let's be honest, they wrote both of these movies with their dicks. Not that I'm necessarily complaining about that, mind you. So, like with the Alien and Halloween franchises, although it didn't happen with the Alien series until at least the second sequel, this was a case of the first movie gradually building up whatever kills the characters, and since audiences saw so little of it in the first movie, they wanted a sequel where they saw much more of it. And in all three cases, it spelled disaster. And it severely diminishes the effect that the killer had. The less we see, the more it is left up to our imagination. Think about how fucking awesome the future war looks in The Terminator. Then think about the movie that was made out of the future war, Terminator Salvation. Not so fucking cool anymore, is it? Build up characters to care about? Tension? What's that? Just because it was awesome to see this person or being over time kill several people doesn't mean that seeing it kill twice or three times as many people in that same amount of time is going to be better. In fact, the opposite is much more likely. So, how does this fuck it up? Let's start with the setting. In the first one, the characters were trapped in this rainforest where anything could kill them. They're far away from civilization. Here, it moved to LA because there's gang violence. And the predator, whom we before saw to kill, let's say maybe a dozen people in total over a period of time, is now quite willing to kill about that amount of people in a matter of minutes and the time it takes to literally just kill them. This predator is not a hunter, it's just a serial killer. If anybody out there understands, maybe you can explain to me what the fuck is it that happens early on when Danny Glover is on the roof pointing his gun at the predator and it just stands there cloaked and then it appears to just duck. And that's it. He doesn't aim his gun downwards, the camera doesn't follow it down. It doesn't disappear into thin air, it just ducks. It doesn't leap away, it just ducks. 
why does that throw him off like that? Also, how about Danny Boy's timing as he looks up the panoramic window and exactly then the predator runs past. He doesn't even mention that to anybody, does he? Wouldn't it be funny if he had to do like double takes, like if I just keep occasionally looking out this panoramic window, ah, there it was. Why do they use the familiar theme from the first one when the helicopter lands? I know that at an early point that was supposed to be Dutch and Arnie rightfully said it was wrong to take it into the city, but didn't they know that it wasn't Arnie there by the time the movie got to post-production? Did they not have some other music to use there? Now I will grant the new weapons and gear of the Predator is pretty damn cool. You know, the spear gun, the net, the disc, the injection it gives itself, although it stands for an awful long time just staring at it, then comes out the needle, then it stabs itself with it, and that blue acid stuff to cauterize the wound. The film is directed by Stephen Hopkins, who brought us the horrendous Lost in Space and the decent at best under suspicion. There's plenty of gore and blood and death in the film, and the effects are admittedly a bit better. We see entirely too much of the Predator from very early on. Think about it, the very first shot, I think, actually turns to Predator vision. And then we get all these point of view shots, which were much more sparsely used in the first one. Also, has anybody else solved the mystery of how the fuck it could watch El Scorpio, if that was his name, the dude with the two Uzis, fall off the roof from behind him when he was clearly standing in front of him two seconds earlier? Robert Darby is always entertaining being a hard ass. but. When he walks away from Danny Glover and Danny Glover pursues him, does anybody else know why the fuck they stay on that shot? I mean, in the middle of the sequence, you can just barely see Danny and Archuleta, much less Robert Davi. And it frankly doesn't look like Robert Davi is running away from him at all, it just looks like he's casually walking. And then Glover and Danny Boy sort of walk back into the shot. It just seems like they should have shot some of that from a different angle, or cut that last bit of the sequence. Is it really that vital that Danny Glover almost beats up his superior officer? I mean, this is supposedly the one they had plenty of time on, as opposed to the first one. Throughout the film, it just seems like the producers went, people like the POV Predator heat vision shots in the first one, so we're gonna abuse the shit out of them in this one. Oh hey, it's... Maria Conchita Alonso, or something like that, the chick who was in... McBain. Where Arnie was at least a little bit realistic in using guerrilla methods. In this, the gang members just seem completely incapable of hitting Glover. How about where he leans out of the open door of the car so that they won't shoot him through the windshield, I guess? I mean, to me, the angle looked perfect for them to just blow the shit out of him. And then when he's standing there with the shotgun, one of several weapons he uses in this that I've yet to see anywhere else, he of course has to yell, hey, get their attention before he starts shooting them. And I think at least one of them takes a shot at him and somehow misses at that minimal range, with him being essentially entirely coverless. Yes, he's got a car door in front of him, but he himself shoots through the car door for no other reason than, hey, they can blow a hole in a car door. Seriously, he shoots like four people, and the fourth one must have been just standing there waiting for his turn to get shot. Come on up, El Scorpio is waiting. Uh, dude, you got a little mustache? Oh, wait, it's gone. This is what I call the speech, kid. No, this is as far as my self-irony goes. Yes, I'm going to be growling half of my lines throughout this. Fuck, they're dying, man. Like my career. Heinemann can kiss my sweet ass. God damn it, go with him. I mean, clearly he needs no backup, but still, go with him. My hands are tied, and not in the good way. How about the way the Predator just slaughters everyone in the voodoo scene? I guess it does make sense that they're just firing all over the place. They're stupid enough to do it. Not entirely sure why not a single one of them freaks out about it, though. Is it just me, or does that dude with the funky-looking hat look like he was just 
hit with a snowball or something else innocuous and just falls over.